Okay, so you're facing a pretty big decision uh-huh. about aortic stenosis treatment. Yeah. And you send us this patient decision aid right. called uh, aortic stenosis, oh. TKGR versus SAVR. Mm-hmm. It can be a lot to take in. It really can. Um, but we're going to break down the key points from this oh. booklet um, so, so you can have more informed conversations yeah. with your doctor okay. and feel confident making the choice that's right for you. Absolutely. Okay. So this booklet starts off mm-hmm. by talking about aortic stenosis. Right. AS. Yeah. And it uses this analogy of a door. Okay. That doesn't open or close properly. Interesting. And that really helps explain what's happening in your heart. That's right. That door is your aortic valve. Oh, I see. And when it's narrowed or stiff, Uh it restricts blood flow from your heart to the rest of your body. Got it. This makes your heart work harder Mm -hmm. and over time can lead to serious problems. And the booklet lists some pretty intense symptoms Mm -hmm. like dizziness, Uh fatigue, shortness of breath. Mm-hmm. Even chest pain. It can really impact your daily life. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's important to remember yeah. that untreated AS okay. can even be fatal. Wow, that's serious. Yeah, so understanding your treatment options yeah. and making an informed decision is really important. So that brings us to the heart of the matter here, yeah. well. which is choosing between these two procedures, mm-hmm. TVR and SAVR. Right, and there is no one-size-fits-all answer here. Oh. The best choice really depends on your individual circumstances Got it. and preferences. It's like finding the right pair of shoes. Yeah, exactly like that. What works for one person uh-huh. might be totally wrong for someone else. That's a great analogy. So this decision aid emphasizes yeah. working closely with your medical team Yes. to find the best fit for you. Absolutely. So let's start with TVR. Okay. Which stands for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. So this one sounds pretty high tech. Yeah. They basically thread this tiny catheter, right. like a little tube, uh huh, all the way from an artery in your leg mm-hmm. up to your heart. It is pretty amazing when you think about it. Right. Wow. They use that catheter to deliver a new valve right. to replace your faulty one. Got it. And because it's minimally invasive, right, the recovery time is generally shorter. So the booklet says, yeah, most people only stay in the hospital mm-hmm. for one or two days. Yeah and can get back to their normal activities huh. within a week or two. I agree, quick. Yeah, that is impressive. Okay, so now let's look at SAVR, okay. which stands for Surgical Aortic Valve Replacement. So this is the more traditional open-heart surgery. That's right. So it involves a larger incision mm-hmm. in your chest to access the heart directly. Yeah. Okay, so the recovery is obviously a little bit longer with this one? Yes, typically several weeks. Okay. But there are certain situations Mm -hmm. where SAVR might be the preferred option. Like what kind of situations? Well, for example, if you need other heart procedures done at the same time, Uh like a bypass surgery, Got it. SAVR allows the surgeon to address multiple issues Mm -hmm. simultaneously. So you're kind of getting everything fixed at once. Exactly. Okay. So for some people, especially those who are younger and healthier, Mm -hmm. SAVR might be a better option right. for long-term durability. That's right. Okay, that makes sense. But it's important to remember yeah. that any surgery comes with risks. Right, of course. And this booklet lays out some pretty specific numbers, mm-hmm. which can be a little daunting. It can be. But it's good to have that information. Definitely. So the booklet talks about potential complications, Yeah. like stroke, Okay. Major bleeding, Mm -hmm. needing a pacemaker, right, and developing an irregular heartbeat called atrial fibrillation, and it gives concrete percentages for each procedure. It does. I was actually surprised to learn that the two-year survival rates Mm -hmm. for both TVR and SAVR are incredibly high. Yeah. Ninety-eight percent for TVR and ninety-seven percent for SAVR. Those are impressive numbers. Yeah, they are. But it is important to keep in mind that those are averages okay, and individual risks can vary. So, right, like some with other health conditions exactly, might have a slightly higher risk of complications. That's why it's so important to talk to your doctor Mm -hmm. about your specific situation and what those numbers mean for you personally. Yeah, Yeah, that makes sense. It's all about personalized assessment. Mm -hmm. Your doctor can help you interpret the data Mm -hmm. and make a decision that feels right for you. Okay, got it. And you know what's really interesting? What's that? The booklet highlights that in the long run, the five-year outlook for both TVR and SAVR is very similar in terms of survival, quality of life, and chances of 
serious problems. So it kind of levels the playing field down. It does. So if the long-term outcomes are similar, yeah. what are some of the other factors? Well, one thing that comes to mind is your age and overall health. Okay. TVR is often favored for older adults uh -huh. or those with other medical conditions mm -hmm. that make open heart surgery riskier. Right. It's considered less invasive mm -hmm. and has a shorter recovery period. So for someone who's not in the best of health, exactly. TVR might be a gentler option. Yeah, it's about choosing the procedure okay. that poses the least amount of risk. Got it given your individual circumstances. I imagine lifestyle plays a role too. Absolutely. Like how quickly you need to get back on your feet. If you have a job yeah. that requires physical exertion uh -huh. or if you're an active person, who wants to get back to their routine quickly? Right. TVR's shorter recovery time right. would be a big advantage. It's almost like choosing between yeah. a quick tune-up right. and a complete engine overhaul. I like that analogy. Sometimes you just need a quick fix uh -huh. to get back on the road, yeah. and other times, mm -hmm. a more extensive approach is necessary right. for long-term performance. And just like with a car, yeah. it's important to consider okay. the long-term costs and maintenance. So while TVR is often considered less invasive up front, mm -hmm. there's a slightly higher chance yes. that you might need another procedure That's right. down the line. Exactly. Oh, really? Why is that? Well. The valves used in TVR yeah. are typically made from animal tissue, mm -hmm. which is durable, okay. but doesn't last forever. Right. So there's a possibility Got it. that you might need another valve replacement at what some it, point. So SAVR yeah. often uses mechanical valves That's right. that are designed to last a lifetime. Exactly. So it's a bit of a trade-off then. It is. TAVR might be gentler in the short term, uh -huh. but SAVR could offer... Right more long-term peace of mind. Precisely. And that's where those personal preferences come in. Yeah. Some people are comfortable mm -hmm. with the idea of potentially needing another procedure right. down the line, uh -huh. while others want a more permanent solution. That's right. Even if it means a longer initial recovery. And this booklet does a great job of sure. laying out all these factors. Yeah, and it doesn't just focus on the medical side of things. It also addresses the emotional and practical aspects. Like, for example, it includes these real-life case studies, yeah. Jane and John, mm. to illustrate yeah. how different people approach this choice. It makes it much more relatable. Those stories are really helpful. They are. So Jane, with her other health conditions, right. opts for TVR uh -huh. because she's concerned mm -hmm. about the risks of open-heart surgery. She needs a solution Ooh, that's I... gentle on her body and yes. allows her to recover quickly. And then we have John, yeah. who is younger and right. healthier, right. and he chooses SAVR oh. because he wants a valve mm -hmm. that will last for the long haul. He's willing to go through a longer recovery yeah. to get that peace of mind. So they highlight the idea that right. there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about finding the right fit yes. for your individual circumstances and priorities. And that's why those questions at the end yes. of the booklet are so important. They really get to the heart of the matter. They prompt you to think about yeah. Your hopes, oh, huh. your concerns, right. and what you want to achieve mm -hmm. with this procedure. I love how it asks, yeah. what do you hope for with TVR or SAVR? Mm -hmm. What concerns do you have with TVR or SAVR? Right. What questions do you have for your treatment team? What questions do you have mm -hmm. for your family and loved ones? It really makes you think about everything it does. before making this big decision. And the booklet really emphasizes yeah. the importance of those honest conversations mm -hmm. with your loved ones right. and, of course, with your medical team. So it's like this booklet is giving you a flash light yeah. you know, to navigate this decision. It is. It's about moving away from yeah. that passive patient role right. and becoming an active participant exactly. in your health care. And one thing that really stuck with me yeah. is how the booklet emphasizes mm -hmm. the importance of involving your loved ones. Yeah, that's so important. Yeah. It's not just about making a medical decision. Right. It's about making a life decision. It is. And those closest to you yeah. can offer you know, invaluable support, Tickish. a perspective, mm. a different kind of understanding. They can help you process the information, talk through your fears and hopes, mm -hmm. and ultimately make a choice that feels right. Exactly. Not just for your heart, yeah, but for your life as a whole. 
and you know, there's no shame in feeling overwhelmed right. or having a lot of questions. That's a big decision. This is a big decision. Yeah, that's a lot to think about. And the booklet encourages you yeah. to lean on your support system okay. and your medical team for guidance. It even provides a list of questions it does. to ask your doctor, mm -hmm. which I thought was really helpful. Like having a cheat sheet. It is. For those crucial conversations. So don't be afraid to speak up. Ask all the questions. Ask all the questions. No matter how big or small. That's right. Be an advocate for your own health. Yeah. Have those open and honest conversations exactly. with your healthcare providers. Make sure your voice is heard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, going through this booklet with you yep. has been really eye-opening. It's packed with information. It is. And it's designed to empower patients to right. make the best choices for right. themselves. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. I think so, too. And hopefully you're feeling more informed and yeah. empowered Absolutely. about your aortic stenosis treatment options. Remember, you're not alone in this. You're not. Your medical team, mm -hmm. your loved ones, yeah. and even resources like this booklet right. are here to support you exactly. every step of the way. So take a deep breath. Yeah. Arm yourself with knowledge. Mm -hmm. Have those important conversations. Absolutely. You got this. You do. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. On the deep dive.